Thank you, Neil. Here's what's happening in the region. Guyana-born Venezuelan 43-year-old Gransley Henry has registered at the San Fernando Center of the Amnesty Drive in Trinidad and Tobago. The news there reported that his wish came through hours after the National Security Minister said the decision to allow or not to allow him to register lies in the hands of immigration officers. Young said he trusts immigration officers who were professionals and the people who have been dealing with such situations before the registration process. He believes they will do what is right. On Saturday, Henry and his family went to register at the Port of Spain Center, but he was the only member of the family who immigration officials rejected. Instead, Henry said they suggested he go and live in his birth country, Guyana, where things are looking good now. The father of four showed his Venezuelan passport and identification card and explained that he moved to Venezuela as a child and lived there. His wife and two of his children are Venezuelans. Haiti's President Jovenel Moïse will not bow to demands of protesters and resign amid allegations of embezzlement of funds linked to the Petro-Caribi Oil Initiative, according to a spokesman for the head of state. CMC reported that thousands of people have taken to the streets since Sunday, demanding Moïse's resignation. But Charlotte Jacqueline Jr., one of the president's spokespersons, said he will not resign. The spokesman said that Moise had done everything to ensure the investigation into Petro-Caribi, which is an oil alliance of many Caribbean states with Venezuela, to purchase oil on conditions of preferential payment. Earlier this week, the state filed a complaint with the Public Prosecutor's Office of Port-au-Prince against those persons implicated in the Petro-Caribi scandal. The Port-au-Prince government commissioner who received the complaint said he would need to analyze the file in order to decide what to do next. 32 Venezuelan migrants are missing after the boat they were traveling in sank on its way to the island of Curacao, the BBC reported. The group left the village in the northwestern Falco state on a speedboat on Friday. Residents said they had not heard from the group since. It was the third Venezuelan migrant boat to capsize in recent weeks. Some 4 million people have fled Venezuela since 2015, according to the United Nations. A severe years-long economic crisis has resulted in high unemployment and shortages of food and medicine and hundreds of thousands of people are said to be in need of humanitarian aid in the oil-rich country. Internationally, Hong Kong's chief executive Carrie Lam criticized protests against a proposed bill that would allow extradition to China, calling them organized riots. According to the BBC, she said the clashes between protesters and police were unacceptable for any civilized societies. 72 people aged between 15 and 66 were injured in violence, including two men who were in critical condition. The bill's critics cite the alleged use of torture, arbitrary detentions and forced confessions in mainland China. They also fear that the law could be used to target political opponents of the Chinese state in Hong Kong. Ms. Lam's government has backed the bill, which is also supported by China. The Hong Kong government has said that there will be legally binding human rights safeguards. The rallies against the extradition bill have been the biggest since Hong Kong was handed back to China by the British in 1997. Hundreds of people have been detained at a Moscow rally demanding punishment for police who detained an anti-corruption journalist. The BBC reported that officers in riot gear clashed with protesters during the unauthorized march in support for Ivan Golunov. Among those detained at the rally were journalists and Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny. A monitoring group said more than 400 people were detained, although Russian authorities put the number at closer to 200. Local media said that more than 2,500 people had taken part in the rally, although authorities said it was less than half that number. Mr. Golunov was freed on Tuesday after drug dealing charges against him were dropped following a public outcry. Russia's interior minister said officers who had taken part in his detention would be suspended during an investigation. Three major Russian newspapers had earlier rallied around the freelance journalists in a rare public show of support. And that brings us to the end of regional and international headlines. Back to you, Neil.